continuing to go further. Here we are today at the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle to discover the secrets of biominerals with Professor Farge, the eminent mineralogist who is as humble as he is wise. Yes, living things can make amazing gems in Ezita. Including us? Including us. Without them, we couldn't walk, hear, eat, or even speak. What exactly are these biominerals? Biominerals are minerals formed by living creatures, from microorganisms all the way up to us, the humans. Bones? Bones, uh, yes. They are made of calcium phosphate, another kind of appetite. Our teeth are composed of ivory, another kind of appetite. Oysters, mussels, scallops, snails, shells are biominerals. And what about cuttlefish? Why do female birds go so crazy over them? It's very simple. Instinct, calcium, eggshell. Another biomineral from everyday life. That's it. Can we talk about precious biominerals now? Follow me, I will show you some precious biominerals. Here we are inside the Treasures of the Earth exhibit within the Gallery of Mineralogy here in the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. Beautiful gems are shown here, among them biominerals, and inside this magnificent setting. And among the many biominerals, coral is a wonderful biomineral. Look at this gorgeous branch of coral that has been uh, collected 150 years ago in Japan. Very Japanese aesthetic indeed, isn't it? And now look at this mermaid. She was carved out of red coal and she belonged to King Louis XIV of France himself. Coral is almost all calcium carbonate, just like oyster shells, right? Yes, and in shells we find mother of pearl. In mother of pearl and pearl, microcrystals of calcium carbonate are bonded together by proteins. Thus, calcium carbonate crystals make up the mineral part and proteins form the organic part. Now that's a biomineral. And those crystals are so teeny that they decompose light into an infinity of microscopic rainbows inside the material. Iridescence. Some fossils still have their original nacre. The ammonite, for instance, uh, dating back from the time of a dinosaur, T-Rex in particular, the Cretaceous, 100 million years ago. This Sphenodiscus shows a spectacular, warmly glowing nacre, 100 million years? And from mother of pearl to pearl? People may not see that pearls have the diversity that they do. Not just oysters make pearls. Scallops, mussels, conch, even clams can make pearls. Freshwater mollusk, saltwater mollusk. For natural pearls to occur, the mollusk must gradually secrete nacre over time. This phenomenon occurs so rarely in nature, that's why pearls are so rare. Cultured pearls occur when humans induce the mollusk to secrete nacre. Iridescence, as it is called, also occur in pearls, existence and quality of the orient that makes pearls so precious. Both natural and cultured pearls can come in all kinds of colors, lavender, pink, even gold. Round or not round, baroque. And speaking of baroque, King Louis XIV acquired some amazing pearls. We can see even pearls encrusted in this table that was owned by the crown. Right, made up of marquetry of gemstone crafted in France during the 17th century with painstaking efforts and technique to show off the pearls. Look how the pearls have been delicately cut in two and set with silver to accentuate their silvery luster. Professor Farge, let's talk about the lavish queens of Europe, Queen Elizabeth I of England. Or Mary of Medici, Queen of France. Here are some pearls that belonged to queens and empresses of France. 
possibly Marie Antoinette, but for sure, Empress Eugenie. And in this picture of Empress Eugenie by Winterhalter, in 1855, she was wearing this gorgeous pearl diadem. Today, we can go further to the Louvre Museum and see that very pearl diadem ourselves. Pearls were also prized by the Asian princes. Look at the refinement of this wonderful necklace set with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and pearls. The Navaratna pendant. Navaratna means nine stones in Sanskrit, and it must have a... Pearl. There are other biominerals out there in the world. Actually, they're quite numerous. But let's talk about a forgotten medieval gem which I actually learned about from you, Professor Fage. This is quite a story. In southwestern France, during the Middle Ages, monks have discovered a way to heat mastodon dusk in order to reveal a magical blue color. It seems like a turquoise blue. Indeed, but it's not turquoise per se. This is, one more time, appetite. So odontolite, if you want to see it yourself, you can go further and to the Cluny Museum. They have a 13th century reliquary which has odontolite encrusted in it. Biominerals, with a rather austere sounding name, are anything but boring. They have led us to a journey to the frontier between what is alive and what is a mineral. That's why we are so concerned here at the museum about those precious gifts from Mother Earth. From the time of the dinosaurs to the glory days of the kings and queens, all over the world, up until the present time, when one pearl can be cost a fortune, Mother Nature has continued to make biominerals and people will have always continued to prize them. We both believe that humans will continue to consider them as precious as long as they live on this planet. The ultimate symbol of power, whether religious, worldly, or of attraction, biominerals can and do indeed incarnate the word 